So, Father, we just thank you, God, and we just come humbly and boldly, God, before the throne room of grace. And we say, Papa, come into this place. God, we ask that your holiness come. We ask that your presence come, God, and fill your sanctuary. That your presence come, God, and it fills each and every one of us, God, that the love of heaven would invade, that the love of heaven would ruin rain. And we say, God, would you come and inhabit the praises, the praises of your children. And come and inhabit the praises of men. God, I thank you that you take delight inside of us, God, and that when we seek you, our hearts will live forever. God, and I thank you in Jesus' name. God, we just say come, we say more Holy Spirit, come and fill this place, God. Would you stir up in us new song? Would you stir up in us a new song, God, to praise you, to praise you, God? In Jesus' name, God, amen. So tonight, uh, we're, instead of doing like from the listening to music uh, and reading off of other other songs the bible says in psalm 149 that let's 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 proclaim a new song unto the lord let's shout to praise unto the lord let's let's from our beds in psalm 22 begin to shout wherever you're sitting just begin to pray uh begin to praise him and so tonight we're going to jump into it's a it's a mix of intercession it's a mix of worship so we're just gonna from where you are if you want to stand if you want to get on your knees if you want to lie down if you want to fall down on your face before god and just begin to to worship him in the spirit and begin to praise him we're gonna move in that um i don't know just like and whenever to whenever we feel like to do to uh, transition we will let you know but we just want to jump into worship and uh right now just begin to close your eyes and just begin to press in uh pray in the spirit just begin to pray in the spirit and hear songs listen to songs find a new song hear the hear the cries of your heart and begin to release the cry of your heart so, Father, I thank you in Jesus' name, God, we say increase, increase, God. If you if you if you feel like you need to walk around, we we encourage you to stand up and we encourage you to walk. We we encourage you to just begin to worship from your heart. And if you hear a melody and you feel like you have something to add into it, just begin to sing to God. Just begin to in that sound begin to tune in to the to the to the spontaneous flow that of the worship that's being sung in heaven begin to tune in uh, and down and begin to download the things that are being sung into heaven through heaven and heaven through us father we just say more god increase
We love you, Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord, that we're loved by you. God, we thank you, Lord, that our hearts would cry out for you, God. That we would be unashamed, God, to praise you. We'd be unashamed to worship you, God. With our own cries of our hearts, God. With the fruit of our lips, give you praise, God, continually. Day and night, God, day and night. With the fruit of our lips, God, continue to give you praise. God, we just thank you for the things that you've begun in our heart. The new songs that you're beginning to release in our hearts, God. And Lord, would it be like a trumpet trumpet plays to our lips, God, and would we sound the sound of heaven, God? God, we just, we praise you and we, we thank you for, for what you're going to do tonight. We thank you for what you will speak tonight. We thank you, God, for your Holy Spirit that as we ask that you give. O oh, giver of life, we thank you, Papa. In Jesus' name, God. Amen. Hello. Awesome. So what we took you was just some intercession. It's something um, we did while we was up in Brazil was just just have time with the Lord and be still. And um, I've noticed when I'm still, like we were today, is that's when I hear God the best. Those, prof those words of knowledge I had was moments when I'm in my car, listening to worship music, singing praises to God, just being still, and He speaks. And that's where I've got those such accurate um, words of knowledge. And a lot of times it's because you don't hear as well the word of God because you're distracted by all these outside things. But when you're still and you're just, you know, spending time with Jesus in quietness and just closing your eyes and worshiping him and praising him, he wants to speak to you, right? He's always looking forward to speaking to you. And that's just something uh, we did in Brazil was before our sessions with jump into intercession where we just pray, sing our hearts out in tongues and just flow and move. And we had a Kayo played ukulele and it was amazing. It sounded like angels were invading the room. So I believe there's a video from Darren, yeah? Is that ready? We'll start off with testimonies. I know there's some good ones um, to share. And you know, the power of people's testimonies are, are powerful. You know, it shows the love of God and the move of God and what he's doing now. And it builds faith. And um, it's just amazing. And we have one. I'll have Jody share the testimony um, later on how, how, how someone's testimony can create a move of God or a move of, of um, the Holy Spirit. So, Darren, you ready? Oh, you can come up too? Oh, right on. You can come up. Can I give a background of what the video is for? Awesome. You go. Can I go on mic? <laughs> okay. Okay, hi, I'm Darren, and um, this is my daughter, Sydney. And, um, she actually made this video, and she has an awesome testimony to tell you if you want to. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. You want me to say it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, what happened is we've been praying for um, my grandparents um, to get to know Jesus, um, my, my wife's mom and dad. And um, Sydney, um, last week, uh, two weeks ago, led... Um, the grandpa to Jesus basically talked to him and um, said do you do you believe in Jesus and he said yes and she so she's been trying and um, the grand grandma she, um, she doesn't really ready to receive Jesus yet so um, she felt that the only way to to get to um, to grandma is to make a video and then um, she feels that that will speak to to her, um, to her. And also, um, and when when you when you look at this video, it's, it's, it's she made it, she makes it really quickly, 
Um, it happened on Friday, and she made it Saturday morning, and she actually made seven episodes. Each one's about like seven minutes long, or oh, eight eight episodes, <laughs> um, and it actually only takes her about ten minutes each to make. But um, it, it's basically the the Holy Spirit God downloading to her, and um, and in this one um, we picked one because and Carol said we only got like five minutes, so it's okay. So um, we picked one, and then. Basically what it was is, um, when you look at it, um, the video, this is the, the Bible that uh, Cindy was looking at. And actually it's a brand new Bible. Um, it, and it's actually, there's no highlights, nothing. She opened the Bible twice and um, the, the two portions that God gave her, it was no coincidence. Um, one was in, um, in 1 Samuel chapter 7. She opened it straight to there. And then it was about... Um, about idols and to actually um, turn to, to God and to um, cast out your idols and then um, and then later that was actually I read it later and it's actually um, Samuel put a, made an idol to God later and that was a, a key thing um, the thing about that was that Sydney was talking to the grandma um, because they're Buddhist and and she was saying you know you can't um, look at that idol that with the statue that's in the house and and that, that was one thing, and, and she was really talking to her about that. And so it was no coincidence that God gave her that, that verse. And it was real quickly. And then um, the next one verse you'll see that she, God gave her was um, in Mark, basically to go out and um, tell the whole world about Jesus, about God, the gospel. And that was no coincidence because she opened the Bible. It was right there. And if you look at this Bible, like I said, it, it's just war. I mean, this. There's no highlights, nothing. So it was, it was definitely God that downloaded these things to her, and that was exactly what um, um, she was talking to Grandma about. So God, God, the Holy Spirit's helping her through this process. And um, one thing that we, she she made this. We haven't showed it to Grandma yet, but um, <coughs> we're praying that she does receive it well. So, and um, so when we, before we went to the mainland, um, on Kelly on a trip, uh, I asked Auntie, I told Auntie Carol about the praise report. And then it, she, I texted her, and then basically it kind of evolved. Or um, and then she, I said, "Oh, Cindy made a video." So Auntie Carol asked if we could show it here. And um, yeah, it's, so it's something. Cindy, you want to say anything? Mm -mm. Oh, well, another thing too is um, this is how after uh, grandpa, she talked to Grandpa, she she makes these kind of um, um, games that her and Grandpa play like a maze about God, how to, how to um, learn about Jesus and, and how to be led to God. And yeah, she made a lot more books and puzzles and then um, and, and basically scores. So grandpa, she's teaching Grandpa more and more every day about Jesus, but she has to do it in private because um, Grandpa doesn't, I mean, Grandma doesn't want it. So um, and basically getting a score. So it, it, I find you throughout the house, so um, <laughs> she didn't want me to bring it. So <laughs> this is Harvey's workbook on blessings. So okay, so <laughs> Cindy, you want to say anything about how you make the video? And well, basically, I made the video by just going on this app and then recording me myself with the puppets, and then after recording myself, I just put it on iMovie, and then made an episode. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so there, it's eight episodes so far, and she did it real quickly from basically breakfast till 10 o'clock. Computer. Yeah. Computer? So, yeah. Yeah, so God's working through it, and, and it's, yeah, it's a kind of amazing, so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna play the video now that she made. So 
fiac an all full Healed. Yay! 
Hallelujah, that was awesome. <laughs> and how, how old are you? How old are you? How, how? Eight. Shocks. Make better videos than me. Out of here. <laughs> so, <laughs> awesome. I, I like, uh, you know what YouTube is? I think you got to make your own YouTube channel and start posting those episodes on there, man. Teach, uh, teach kids, they're, they're always on YouTube watching, watching all kinds of videos. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Um, so let's get into more testimonies because we love testimonies around. Anybody got a testimony of this week since, since the last time we met? Anybody went out and prayed for anybody or saw miracles? So they went to Kamakanali on Tuesday. Yeah. Who else was, anybody in here was with them? Come on, Kana Lee, this Tuesday. You guys have any testimonies from that? Monique, you have a testimony? Yeah? Here. Yeah. Uh, I was in a group with, uh, there were three of us, Carol, myself, and Kapua. Uh, what's the name of that place again? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, we went there, and uh, first of all, we saw this young man. He was sitting on a bench, and he has his, uh, his f cell phone in his hand. So uh, we went and approached him. Carol was asking him and uh, if we uh, oh. <laughs> if we can pray for for him and if and what does he want to us to pray for him and first he said it's okay and then Carol had asked him uh, what were you doing sitting over here? And then uh, he said that he's from um, uh, Samoa. And he was living here for 10 years and went home for one year and he just came back. And he was looking for a job. And um, the, he, was, uh, he was supposed to go and have an interview over there and uh, he's waiting for his son to go. And we saw him around about 11, 11 15, and his uh, appointment was at 12 o'clock. So we have asked him if he's a little bit uh, nervous about waiting all that time. And he said a little bit. And then when we said that, can we pray for you? And he said that's what he was doing, sitting out there. and. He has his Bible in his cell phone, and he was praying uh, to the Lord for this job that he's going to go for interviewing. And uh, we were so pleased to hear that, and so finally he said, okay, we can pray for him. And we did, 
and it was amazing. Um, the insurance after we pray, he's more, um, I don't know how, how, more relaxed and um, his facial was more happy and uh, he thanked us for doing that for him. And uh, later on, he bypassed our table. We were having lunch. And uh, I didn't see him, but I heard Kapua ask, as he was passing, how, how did it happen? I mean, how was it? And he said, OK. But he was walking. And uh, we also prayed for another girl who was also there for interviewing. Yeah, she was looking for a job. And he just, she was just there waiting for it. So we pray for her also. And uh, it was, for me, it's, I get so excited. I, uh, I feel blessed and uh, I want to do it more. So. Uh, awesome. Yeah. Um, you guys plan to go out again next week? Maybe. Yeah, if anybody is interested, we right there, Ron, he coordinates <laughs> these 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 uh um mall outings. We didn't get kicked out this time, I'm guessing. Yeah, we stay <laughs> we didn't kicked out, so that's good. Um anybody else got testimonies? You got anything? Oh Sherry? Oh yeah, you guys got a testimony. Power of the testimony. Don't don't hold the glory. <laughs> don't touch the glory. Yeah, so so one thing we learned, and it's important to to know is so something that Randy Clark taught us in um at in Brazil was when we don't give testimonies, we actually hold the glory. You know, we touch the glory of God because it's his testimony, and when we keep it to ourselves, we're holding the glory of his power. You know? Oh, <laughs> you got a testimony? Oh, okay. Just this afternoon at lunchtime. Take the mic, take the mic. Can I go back this far? Hi. Okay, so today at, at, at lunchtime, uh, I'm at the first grade table, right? Six and about five, six, seven years old. And about four or five of them asked about Jesus. They saw my cross and they asked about why it's empty. Because they're Catholic and Buddhist. <laughs> And, you know, you just got to get into that six-year-old mindset, you know. And the Lord filled my mouth with words explaining. So they asked, why is, why is, why is it flat? Where's, where's Jesus? And I said, Jesus, he lives. But who is Jesus? And I say, he's the son of God. And he, poof, their mind is just blown away, right? And then they're like, the son, God had a son? I said, yes. He sent, his, our father sent his son so that he, that he could teach us how to behave, how to do things. That's how much he loved us. <laughs> Again, just, you could just see their minds just blowing away. And I'm just like, praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> awesome see god puts us in places you know we're, we're not working in where we work for no reason you know everywhere that we go everywhere we walk and even where we work is a place to minister and god will give you the opportunity to, to do it and he'll put hasty right in front of it. it's just our, our obedience you know she could easily say uh no it's a touchy subject because it's is it is it a pu public school it's a public school, you know, it's a t very touchy subject, but we get, step out and, you know, I know another person is uh, Uncle Ben Aina, you know, for him, he, he knows get him, he go get him when he's, when he's 
um, substituting, you know, when, the, the, when Jesus comes up, he's like, oh, you want to know? <laughs> you know, that's, even though it's good, you just got to step out and believe that God is, God is there with you, yeah? So you guys both have a, t who's going to share it? Oh. Oh, oh yeah, you guys can tell the first part. So this is amazing. I, I heard this testimony, how God moves and how you see the interaction of that, like the baton being handed off from, from Jesus, so. We share couple testimony. Okay, so um, one uh, one day we met, we went to go meet up with uh, one of the pastors from another another church, and it was Ron, uh, Kyle, and I. We went out uh, to go to go pray for some people, and afterwards we we walked down the street, and I was like, "Hey, let's go to the bus stop, and let's go see uh, let's go see if there's some people there we can go and love on." So we walk uh, walk down to the bus stop, and we we pass this one guy, and on top of the sign it says uh, "for good karma" or something like that. And so I went up to the guy, I said, "Hey, man, I see your sign." I said, "Can I pray for you? What's going on with your leg?" He says, "Oh, I'm a Buddhist." I said, "Awesome. What's going on with your leg?" And he said, "Oh, I have a tumor in my leg." I said, "Okay, let's pray for that." God revealed it because he wants to curse that thing. So we prayed, nothing happened. We prayed again, nothing happened. We just blessed him. We walked down the way. We go to the bus stop, and we just start worshiping, interceding, and boom. We start praying for people. Uh, Ron prays for this one guy and his knees get healed. Boom, and his back gets healed. And the guy's like, will this ever come back? And Ron's like, I sue that in the name of Jesus. And he's like, oh, okay. Boom, he walks into the bus stop. <laughs> And then I say talking. I'm talking to this other lady, and she's telling me that she's Catholic and all these different kind of things, and she's baptized in the church. I said, "What about are you baptized into the Holy Spirit? What is that?" Boom! So boom, she gets filled with the Holy Spirit. She gets healed, and she couldn't. She has a hard time walking because she had like cancer. Some and the cancer like kind of it. It, it kind of prevent her from walking at a at a at like such a dis, at a distance where if you go too far like you get kind of weak or if you stand too long you kind of get wobbly. We prayed for her and boom like it's like strength just jumped back into her body and then she got like complete mobility and she's like walking back and forth back and forth and we're like Jesus. So anyways after that like just revival just broke out at the bus stop we start walking back and there's this uh, we pray for a couple other people <clears throat> God's be gives us some words and we just begin to prophesy and um, as we're walking back uh we're passing this building and this lady comes out with a wheelchair and on her wheelchair says he greater than i and i'm like okay and so she comes out and we walk up to her and we say hey man we're just going around loving on people what's what's going on with you what what's happening and she's like oh uh she's like she turned picks up the speech she's like trying to book it away from us like i don't want to do nothing with you guys and we're like okay and we're like no we pray for people god heals them we believe right now that you can get out of this thing and she's she she looks at us and it's as if if I looked into her eyes and it was as if there was a groaning saying, show me a better way, show me a better way, as if something inside of her was breaking, as if something inside of her was yearning for so much more. But she looks at us and, and the response that she gives us is that I'm too strong in my religion, that I'm too strong in my faith, that I'm a part of a church and no, I don't want this. But hey, you should go pray for those homeless guys. I said, awesome, we already prayed for them. We want to bless you though. And I said, you know what? We will pray for them again, but we want to pray for you. And she said, no, I'm good, I'm good. And we said, okay, so boom, she, she goes off, she goes away. And we're like, oh man, you know, God, we just, we just pray that you'd move her heart with the spirit of repentance that she would just see you. Because God, we believe your goodness leads her to salvation. Your goodness, God, reveals your love. And so we, we walk back to the car and then uh, we jump into the car and here she comes on the wheelchair again. We're like, Jesus, just touch her right now, God. Just touch her right now. And so we get back into the van and then we leave. And days after that, we get a testimony of something happened. Like, do you remember the lady that you met at Kunia? And Sherry comes up, do you remember the lady that you, remember that you met at Kunia inside the wheelchair? I said, yeah, what about her? How did you know? How did you know? We didn't even tell this testimony. What do you, what do you know? And so here's the other part. <laughs> Can't wait. Um, so that lady uh, just just so happens to, she's volunteered at our school maybe eight, nine years, I don't know, we we just always saw her in a wheelchair, never thought anything. So um, her teacher that she had volunteered with for many years transferred school, and so they asked me if I would take her. So first I said, okay, then, gosh, I hope she never hears this one. <laughs> we both said, don't, don't, you know, don't, um, 
you know, you should think about taking people in, whatever, whatever. So I was having doubts, and more than one person told me. So I was like, oh, I tried to get out of it. I said, oh, maybe I shouldn't. My room is small. I don't have room in my my room in for the wheelchair. And um, but then somebody said, you know, she only has five years to live. Can't you can't you just do this for her? So I said, okay. And then uh, somebody else after that even came and said, oh, I don't know if you should take volunteers. And I was like, okay, God's going to work it out. Just, it's okay. Uh, somehow God's going to work it out. So uh, then I find out about what the guys did. And they said, that was her. And I'm like, oh, okay. And they said, maybe she's being sent to you, Sherry, so you can give your testimony. And I'm like, she told them, go pray for the homeless guy. She want me to give my testimony. So she came in and um, she turned around. She was leaving. And I saw the He is Greater Than I sticker. And God said, go talk to her. And I thought, she told them, go pray for the homeless guy. You want me to open my mouth? I'm, I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to even admit that I know God. And I heard, go talk to her. So I said to her, oh, Glenda, you got skinny. And she says, no, it's not skinny i'm losing my muscle and then god said now open your mouth and tell her about makoa them and i'm like oh <laughs> so i told her and she was blown away she said how do you know how do you know and i'm like because god sent them to pray for you and god sent you here for me to pray for you now and um she said oh do you know that day that she was getting off the bus and she saw them she said she had come from her doctor her doctor had given her like really devastating news like i think maybe that was the day that she got told she only had five years to live or whatever and she was coming off of the bus and she said that as she was going home that um the guys encountered her and that night, she put away her Bible, she put away her rosary, she put everything. She said, if you are a God, you wouldn't do this to me. So I, I, she's telling me this, and my students are coming back in, and I'm like, I can't pray for you in front of my students. I have my students. I said, okay, you know what? what I have sisters here. We're going to pray for you. When, when do you want us to pray for you? And then by then she said, okay, you tell me when and where. So it was the next day after school, and then in the morning she tried to back out of it. But then she said um, on her phone there was a worship song. And I forget what I texted her, something. Oh, God told me something. To, so then she texted me back, Sherry, are you doing something to my phone? <laughs> like, I don't know how to get a song on my own phone. You think I could get it on yours? So anyway, that afternoon, after she canceled on us and then came back, she came. So it's four of us, four of us prayed for her. And we prayed for her faith to come back. We prayed for healing for her. So she said she hasn't been able to walk for like a like couple, months. couple months. So she, could, she couldn't even get out of her bed. She couldn't stand up. She was like at the mercy of everybody. So then she texted us. And uh, so the latest, well, she, so I told my students, we're going to pray for this lady. And no, I said, I'm going to pray for her because she's going to walk around this room because there's no room for her wheelchair. And I was kind of scared, like I shouldn't say this. but, And so then, then she texted us that she walked down her hall without holding on the next morning, and she made her own coffee, and she made her own breakfast. And we were like, oh. And so I... <laughs> I told her, I told you, I told my kids, I'm going to pray for you because you can walk around this room because you cannot wheel your wheelchair around. And then last night she gave us a video and she's curling her hair and the doctor said she couldn't use that curling iron because she doesn't have muscle, uh, she has to have muscle in her hand. And she was, when I listened to it, it's the, the, the curling iron is making that clink, clink sound. And... Um, <laughs> She said she made some fancy dinner, yeah? yeah? Some fancy dinner. She told the mom, stay out of the kitchen. And uh, she showed us her feet, that she couldn't fit these shoes for over a year. And that she has to hold the slipper on with her toes. And she says, if I don't have muscle, how can I hold the slipper on with my toes? So she went to the doctor today. We didn't hear what happened today. Awesome. Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Let's just give God glory for that. Come on, God. Hey, so check this out. I want to talk about so some sow and some water, but God brings the increase. So check this out. Even at the place of where we saw persecution, even at the place where we saw rejection, we were willing to step in and say, here, 
This is God. Do you want him? They're like, no. But look at the seed that was sown. And somewhere down the way, another believer that says, when I lay hands on the sick, they shall recover, went up to her and said, hey, let's pray. And what happens? They brought the water. And what happened? God brought the increase. So from the place of where I want nothing to the place of where love is wooing me on because love never gives up, because love never fails, because love is always hoping the best and love is always pursuing after me. Like the prodigal son, the father is running after you. And so love was willing to move in that place. So just as, as, as one person sows, the other person waters, and then God brings the increase. And so we can see from a place of, boom, rejection, to the place of softness, to the place of receiving, to the place of believing, to the place of where faith with action begins to move. And a person who's down in the wheelchair begins to jump out and begins to walk, begins to do things that we couldn't do before. This is the Mark 16, 15 that we say, go into all the world. So this is, this is what needs to be what needs to be recognized recognizes that this is so crucial this is so this is so central to the gospel that healing is part of the gospel that deliverance is part of the gospel it's all part of it without these things it will not be fulfilled it says in Romans that we fulfill the gospel with accompanying signs that follow us with accompanying signs miracles and wonders the gospel is always confirmed by the power of God and so check this out I want to share with you his testimony so mission Sunday I went to Wahiwa uh, a new hope and I just shared a little bit about Brazil and then I released the gospel and we do some ministry time and right after ministry time when we was ready to go this uh, pastor Lori brings up this girl to me and her name is Dominique and um, she comes in and she has this wrapping around her arm and she said that oh she just like like five minutes ago just sprained her fingers and I said okay let's pray so I grab her by the hand and I just begin to pray Father can we command healing and I, you know okay how's it how does it feel check it out what's going on is anything happening no shift no change after like about 10 times I'm praying I'm going after this thing nothing is happening so I said okay check this out I'm not going to stop there let's see if we can go and hit another angle and I said okay do you know about the Holy Spirit no are you baptized in the Holy Spirit no okay so boom I just show her a little bit okay this is what the Holy Spirit is Jesus said he's a he's a person he's one that's going to come and live inside of us he's the one that's going to comfort us he's the one that's going to encourage us he's going to he's the one that's going to partner with us in this life and the Bible says apart from him that we can do nothing and if to know God is everlasting life then 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 in that place means that we have eternity now and it's not just a place that we're looking forward to go but it's a place of where we can step into an experience here on earth as it is in heaven so I said this is the Holy Spirit and Jesus said how much more will the Father give the Holy Spirit to that I'm asked who do you want him and she said yeah I said okay let's just pray so we pray and I said Father just come with the Holy Spirit fill her up right now and set her free and so I just said I'm gonna pray over you in my spiritual language shake hit it and I just begin to speak over tongues of her and I said do you hear do you hear something and she says yeah I said do you hear language she says yes I said speak it out speak it out she begins to go shaka da 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 I'm like Jesus come on come on Jesus so so that happens. She wasn't healed that day, but she got, she spoke in tongues. Okay, she spoke in tongues. And I said, okay, she got filled with the Holy Spirit. She just got saved. God, that's awesome. A week later, there was her grandmother comes back to me and she says, you know, that day that you pray for, her, she goes home, she takes the wrapping off of her hand and her finger pops right into place. I said, come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. So look at that. We so... So, some people sow, some people water, but God brings the increase. I want to propose to you something tonight that maybe perhaps if you just pray, maybe perhaps if you just try to step out, maybe perhaps if you do that, God just might step in. God just might show up, not, maybe not at the time, at the moment, but maybe as they go, Jesus said, maybe the lepers just might be cleansed. Maybe as they go, something actually might take place. Maybe, just maybe something in the miraculous might break out because you're a son. Does it make sense? So check this out. So, and then not only that, she says, you know that you are talking to her and she was responding to you. She was saying, yes, she was speaking in tongues. All of a sudden she was hearing you. And did you know that the ear that you were speaking into, that it was deaf? And I said, what? <laughs> And I'm, I'm, as, I'm, I'm as innocent as can be. I'm just talking to her. I'm just praying for her. And ears are being open without me even noticing. I said, God, you're so good. God wants to heal regardless if you think. 
Just look at how much God desires to touch his sons, to desire to touch his daughters. Just look. I'm not even addressing that ears be open. I'm here praying for her fingers to be healed. I'm here releasing the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And God wants to open ears as well. I said, God, why not? And just open everything, God. Just go ahead and do what you want to do. I want to say this. How about we say, God, just be God. Just be God. We did, we, how about we just be bold enough and dare to say, God, just be the one that's in seated, that's, that's that's enthroned upon our hearts how about we just say God be the one that's enthroned on heaven how about we just say where heaven is there's no sickness where heaven is there's no deafness where heaven is there's no illness so if therefore if we're ambassadors of Christ and where we go what is ambassadors that means that we release the embassy of the kingdom that means that we release the very the very place the habitational the very place of where heaven is that means that we take it upon ourselves not only is it a hand but it's within and then where we step we release it so if that means where God is there's no sickness and when we step into the room sickness must go that means that everything that's not of God must bow its knee everything within you that's not of God must bow its knee deaf ears must bow its knee blind eyes must bow its knee everything broken fingers spraying fingers even at that moment if it seemed like it's bowing its knee little did you know that it's trembling on the inside little did you know if you keep on going it just might take a bow down and say Jesus is king and it might surrender and it might submit only if you would just yield to God come on Jesus come on Jesus so how about how about I just say how about we just take two minutes I mean it's just two minutes how about we just lie how about we just get on our knees and we just cry out we just begin to cry out for Papa and we just say God come and fill this room right now just begin to get down on your knees God we say come and we say fill this place right now God I thank you if you're in here and you have something going on with this top part of your head and there's a severe part of a headache we just put your hand right there and we're going to command healing God would just say in Jesus name God would your presence just begin to cry out and press in just begin to cry out for the more of God just begin to tell God that you want more that you want to see an increase of the miraculous that you want to see an increase of the power just begin to cry out for the more of God if you're not filled with the Holy Ghost right now in Jesus name a fresh baptism of the Holy Ghost and a fire God we say signs miracles and wonders God signs miracles and wonders God that it would be everywhere that we go that it would accompany us God we cry out for you Jesus God like Moses said we don't want to go if your presence is not there God we ask for your presence, God, to come. We ask for your holiness to come and fill this place, God. Lord, with that holiness, we can't see you. We can't see your face, God. We can't live, God. We can move in your power, but without your presence, God, it's nothing. It's meaningless, God. We ask that your presence would come and step into this room. And I saw, I saw as the lamb came in and he was in the aisles and I said, what, what does this mean? And he says, tonight, I just want to release the stillness of me. Tonight, I just want to release my presence tonight I just want to release myself and if we would all turn our eyes and gaze and fix our eyes upon the one who is the lamb upon the one who was slain then maybe perhaps we just might look into the very love of Papa that compelled him to move in compassion to heal the multitudes God I declare over us Acts 5 God that not just people would get healed but regional God cities nations God Lord that people would bring in or people from many different cities into one place and as we walk in it won't just be a dangerous shadow God but it would be the anointing of the Holy Ghost and of power of Acts 1 way Acts 1 8 the endowment of dunamis power upon us that as we step into places God sickness would bow its knee God demonic would bow its knee God we ask for more of you come God come like a mighty rushing wind tonight God come like a mighty rushing wind tonight God come and shake the grounds God come and shake what needs to be shaken come and sever what needs to be severed come and break off what needs to be break off God prune the branches tonight that we would bear much fruit of you God that everywhere we go God that the light of heaven would be displayed for all to see God we say come Jesus come and release your glory God come and release your glory God come and release your glory God we just wait on you just wait on him just wait on him God we just wait on you we just wait on you. Just begin to tune into his heart and to the flow. Just begin to look and gaze upon his eyes. Just begin to picture Jesus walking to you. 
standing on the other side of the sea saying, come up over here. I want to show you another way. Just begin to look as an open heaven comes down. And as you see that a door is standing open and a papa is saying, my beloved, come up over here. I want to show you a better way. I want to show you a better way that leads to the Father. I want to show you a better way that leads to life. I want to show you a better way that leads to the miraculous. I want to show you a better way that leads to a life of holiness without striving, without performing. I want to show you a better way. And that way is my son. And that way is my spirit. And that way is my glory upon you. And that way is myself living in you, tabernacling my presence in you, dwelling myself within you. And that way is you becoming me and walking out as if I was still here. God, I thank you in Jesus' name. God, move again. Move again, God. Move again. Come like a wave, God. Release your angels tonight. Release your angels tonight, God. We command healing in this house, God. Jesus' name, we just wait for you. Whoa. Let the shalom of heaven come. Whoa. There's mantles coming down. There's mantles coming down. It's coming down right now. It's, it's, it's even falling upon some of you. There's a mantle of holiness that's coming. It's like a blanket. It's like a warm covering coming from your head to the wrapping around your shoulders. You even feel it around the tips of your toes. Whoa, God. We say increase, God. We say increase, God. The mantle of holiness come. Come, Jesus, God. Whoa. Whoa, Jesus. We thank you, God. Jesus name God Jesus name just a little bit longer just a little bit longer God we thank you let the mantle of your shalom fall let the glory come God the Shekinah glory come let's just press in a little bit more God let the Shekinah glory come God just a little bit more God we thank you we thank you God we desire you more God we want what you have to offer Jesus 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 God Jesus, God. Jesus. 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 Whoa. Just be still. And know he's God. Just be still. And know he's God. Thank you, Papa. Whoa. Just, just like a minute more. Just a wow. It's His holiness. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just one, just one more minute, just wait. It's a beautiful thing where he just speaks and not us.
it's heavy. Thank you, Papa. Mm. Let this go with us, God. Let it not just be here, God. Let it let this go with us through our daily lives, God. Let it just be normal. Let it just be something that's supposed to happen, God. Thank you, Papa. Thank you, Papa. Jesus. Wow. Jesus. <sighs> Whoa. Does anyone sense like reverence and like his power? Feel like tingling, you feel like heat, you feel like electricity flowing through your hands like a, like something is just welling up inside of you. Jesus. Just thank you, Papa. Jesus. I just release God who is rich in mercy right now. Let mercy flood this place. Feel God. Feel God. Feel right now. Whoa. Feel right now with mercy. Jesus. Hallelujah. That was good. Did anybody get um did God speak to anybody that wants to share any words that oh, this is loud. Any uh, revelation that God shared while they're laying prostrate for the Lord? What time is it? So I'd like to share another testimony. And this testimony happened just, when was this, babe? Wednesday? Past Sunday, yeah? So this testimony is going to show the power of a seed. How Makoa talked about, sometimes we just are called to plant seeds. But when we plant the seed, it causes other people to plant seeds. When they share their to testimony, it'll plant another seed in someone else. That's, that's why it's very important, you know, how when you, when you're, when you don't share a testimony, you're taking the glory from God because that glory, he gives you a testimony to share so other people can be blessed by a testimony. You give him the glory. There's, there's a purpose for that testimony. Um, just like if he didn't say nothing about the lady in the wheelchair, Cher would have never known and God wouldn't have been able to, to work in that matter, you know. So, um, it's super important is to just share and just be excited about it because it's amazing what God's doing. And I would let my wife share about this testimony. Come. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this past Sunday, oh no, uh, I think it was f this last Friday, um, I was flipping through Facebook and one of my good friends posted um, a request for doTERRA oils and she said uh, for the past two months 
she's been having excruciating pain in her hands from carpal tunnel where she'd wake up in the middle of the night and scream and cry because her hands would, it would be so much in pain that she would cry from it feeling like fire just all through her hands and she hasn't been sleeping. So she said, um, if anybody knows anyone with doTERRA oils, I would like some, you know, who has? And then so when I looked at her comments, there was all these comments like, oh, there's this person who sells and this other person, blah, blah, blah. And I just, I just said, oh, <laughs> I got something better, you know? So I commented and I said, oh, hi, sis. Um, I have something better. I wrote that. And I let that go. She Facebooks me and says, what is that better thing that you have? Um, text me. I just laughed. I showed Jason. I said, look, babe, what is this? I get that's better, you know? And I just left it as that. Then I never text her. She comes looking for me and texts me. She goes, so what, sis? So what is this thing you have that's better? I want to know. Call me. Now, a little history on this friend of mine. Last year, she went through a traumatic uh, experience where she almost died. She had major internal bleeding. She had a mass that was as big as a grapefruit in her belly. She's my age, one of my best friends. Um, she wasn't a believer yeah, at that time. She almost died um, to the power of prayer. I was able to pray for her. That tumor would die off in her body. And they finally got it removed, yeah? And she's cancer free. Yeah, it's that same girl, the same girl. So the reason why I'm telling you a little history about her was because God would heal her, yeah? And she gave her life to Jesus the minute she got healed uh, when she was on the phone with me. And I, when she texted me that, I said, okay. So I called her, or well, I texted her back and I said, sis, you remember the same God that healed your cancer? Is the same God that can heal your carpal tunnel. She said, oh, yeah, you know, and I was like, can me and Jason pray for you? And she said, yes, when? So I said, okay, Sunday we're going to come over, we're going to pray for you. She said, okay. So on Sunday we went, we got to pray for her um, and her boyfriend. She's pregnant, yeah, and she said it's so hard because the doctors, because she's pregnant, she, she cannot take medicine. She took Tylenol, nothing's helping. She even said she also, they also found another lump in her stomach in her abdomen again. So I said, okay, we're going to pray for that too. Jesus is going to take that too. You know, and so she said, okay. So we prayed for her, yeah, and long story short, we ministered to her and her, boy, her boyfriend. The next day, she texts me, and she says, oh, my gosh, I slept through the whole entire night for the first time in two months. I've had no pain, no fire in my hands. And she said, Thank you so much. I give God all the glory. And I said, yes, that is what it happened. You know, Jesus healed you. And then she texts me <laughs> hours after that in the late afternoon. She goes, sis, I still don't have pain. She goes, I still have numbing, numbing and tingle, tingliness. But she goes, I expected it to come back. But still, I don't have pain yet. And I was like, he took the pain. I was like, he's healing you. He's still healing you. And she's like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe it. And so I'm praying, and I'm, I'm saying, Lord, I pray that she will, you know, say a testimony on Facebook again because she wrote asking for doTERRA oils, and all these people saw it thinking that doTERRA oils was going to heal her. And I wanted, I said, Lord, I want her to give you the glory, and I want you to share, I want her to share your, the testimony of how much you've healed her and what you've done for her and share it, you know. And so she never, and I was kind of discouraged. And then one morning, Jason called me um, like three days later, and he goes, hey, trickle check Eileen's post. And I was like, Okay, so I checked the post. She wrote her testimony how she gives God the glory because God will heal her. And it's been three days with no pain. She hasn't, she hasn't had pain for three days. She slept all through the whole night for three days and blah, 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 blah. And we was like, yes. And then from that testimony, all these people was like, wow, wow. And then one of our close friends who is not a believer, um, she said, oh, so Jody and Jason healed you? And then she said, 
no jesus did and i said that's right and she goes oh okay is it, then she keeps going on yeah well can can she's doing this on purpose though this girl yeah she said oh well can they heal trisha because trisha's having a hard time which is another friend of ours that's that's her cousin and and i wrote jesus can heal jesus did this for eileen she can do this for um <laughs> Since you said I will, <laughs> I was shame. I never let go up. That's why. Okay, okay, okay. No, yeah. And then so like, um, so yeah, um, so she wrote that, and then so the cousin that was like, oh, so so you know, questioning about Jesus healing, and we're like, yeah, it's Jesus, Jesus. And then so Eileen, who got healed, was telling her. Just seek him, seek him, you know, and we're like, yeah, you know, she's like promoting Jesus now on her page, you know, and then so that girl who needed prayer, um, who was an unbeliever, that's one of our friends in our circle of friends, she hit me and Jason up and she said, sis, I need prayer, I have kidney failure and she's on dialysis and all this, she's having a hard time and I was like, praising God, because I was like, this once unbeliever who wanted nothing to do with Jesus saw one of our friends get healed for the second time, yeah? And she was like, I guess, totally just blown away by it. And just by the power of that testimony she posted on Facebook and how it just had like this ripple effect on people who were reading it. She wanted, she, now she's seeking the Lord and saying, I need prayer, I want prayer. And so we're gonna pray for her on Wednesday. And we're like, yeah, Jesus is gonna take all that. that Jesus, it's done, you know? We're just thanking God for that, so yeah. <laughs> So that's the power of planting seeds, yeah? You know, we, we just got to do our part, and God does the rest. You know, we just step out in obedience, and God truly does the rest. And we didn't expect that. Let's do it. Here. Bro, you, we're going to come into agreement. You just shout it out. We're just going to extend hands. Okay, everybody extend hands to, to Eileen and Trisha. Because Eileen, she, uh, we, we don't have to lump it still there, but we'll, we'll pray into it. So right now, in Jesus' name, we de decree and declare healing right now in the name of Jesus for both Trisha. We say new kidneys, Lord. Right now, in Jesus' name, we say kidney disease go. Lord, we just thank you right now for brand new kidneys. We thank you right now for brand new, um, whatever it is that she needs. I, she, she has diabetes. We say no to diabetes right now in Jesus' name. We just thank you for taking diabetes away, Lord. We say normal blood sugar, everything back to normal right now in Jesus' name. We thank you for get ridding, getting rid of that, that lump in Eileen's side right now. We decree and declare that it is gone. Father, we just thank you for healing, Lord. Father, we... Um, we know that you are the greatest surgeon, the greatest doctor, that nothing can compare to your power through the love that you have for your children. So, Father God, we just thank you for healing right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. So, yeah, that's the power of a seed, and, and it's amazing. It's just stepping out and just recognizing. I think the biggest thing is recognizing every opportunity that God gives you. You know, um, we can be so distracted at times. I'm guilty of being distracted and recognizing when God places someone in front of me that needs healing. Um, still to this day, sometimes I see people walking by me with a, a like limping, but I'm too busy with work. I'm like, oh, I'm torn. I'm like, I cannot leave this guy. I'm t talking with this guy. I'm in a meeting. I feel like I want to just leave it and run. <laughs> Pray for this guy. That happened yesterday, but, you know, it's like I feel torn. I feel a little convicted, but... I'm working on it, you know. We just got to keep, keep being obedient, and God God honors your obedience, and he does the healing, right? Jesus does the healing. It ain't us. He just uses our hand. He uses our hearts, and he uses us to transfer the word of God, the gospel, that Jesus heals, that Jesus lives today. You know, that's what it's all about, that he lives today, he lives in us, and he's working through us, and that we don't worship a distant God. He's right here, you know. And... um. So while my face was on the ground praying, I just want to share a word that I got, and I believe it needs to be spoken. I heard 
we are citizens from heaven. We don't belong to this world. And I believe sometimes we get stuck in that, that mode where we think that this is, this is it right here. This is, our, this is where we live, you know. And it happens because we do the day-to-day, -day, nine to five. This is work. This is the way to live. But we're citizens from heaven. This is all temporary. You know, we don't belong here. And, you know, our mission here on earth is, is, is not only our jobs, not, you know, love the brother and sister in church, but he tells us to go, step out, you know, get out of the four walls of the church and, and do these things. And um, I think uh, I had another word about com um, getting the unity. You know, I heard from my sister in church, I read today that she has this thing about unity, uniting the generations together. And God gave me another word that, you know, it should be one generation, a Jesus generation. You know, we often look at, oh, this generation's, this generation, you know, like, our, not my generation, but more like their generation, they're like, they got no hope. Look at all the stuff they're doing. Look at the stuff they look at, the music they listen to. You know, and I'm guilty of that too. You can ask my wife, I used to say there's no hope for this generation. But if we keep speaking that into that generation, what are we saying? You know, we have one generation. That's a Jesus generation. We got to live out of this Jesus generation as children of God, because that's truly what we all are, is children of God. And then I heard from, a, um, actually it's from a, the homeless guy. And I, I, it was just convicting my heart that we should live as one denomination. You know, we, we have Christians and Catholics and all this, but... It should be one denomination that's that's children of God you know we we sometimes segregate ourselves and as you know I'm a Methodist or I'm a whatever it is and that's fine but all in all the recognition that we are all children of God and that's what we live for is a children of God and just loving on Jesus and um, I believe that's I was talking like a prophet now. <laughs> I believe that that's a generation that we're stepping into right now that's a, a time that we're stepping into where, and I'm reading it all over with all these ma big prophets. I have this, anybody got Elijah's list? You know, it's amazing things pop on there. I don't read all of them because it's like five a day or whatever, but the ones I do read, you hear a lot of things about people coming together that America shall be saved. America shall be saved by the unity of the generations. By the unity, it's the young and the old coming together. And I believe this generation that you see up here, is the generation that's going to drive it because this generation is bold. You see the things that they do that is ungodly? Imagine if they turn that boldness and do godly things. How powerful that would be and how inspirational that would be for the, the older generations as well to come by and say, that we need to step into this. We need to walk into this. Something is happening. There's a move that we need to catch. There's a fire that we need to, to, to touch. You know, I want to be just like Mako and... And all these young Ron and all, you see it, you know, they're out there. They're doing the work of God, the work of Jesus, what the Bible tells us to do. You know, it's the way of living as citizens of heaven. Because once we leave this earth, what footprint did we leave? You know, we, did we live a nice, good 80 years of life? And, or did we touch a thousand lives like Jesus is calling us to do? And um, I'm praying for America to be saved because I... We've been to Brazil, and they're being saved. That, that place is on fire. You see Africa. I mean, the things that are going on there. China right now, there's a move of God in China, and they're doing it all underground. They don't care. They're doing it underground, um, doing silent worship and just crying. No music, just crying out to God in silent worship. In Iran, you hear a move of God. In South Korea, and hopefully soon, North Korea. They need it. <laughs> they need Jesus. And um, actually, I read an article about in North Korea where a pastor was in prison for two years. You know, and every day in the prison, he still worshiped God, and, you know, he, he believes that, you know, North Korea will be saved too. And it's just, it's a movement, a revival movement that I see happening. And I think that's just something to remind us of is we're citizens of heaven, ultimately. This is all temporary, and it's just something we just constantly got to reminding ourselves is, especially in America, we live with so much stress and so much, all these anxiety, all, just because of the day-to-day, -day, just the way of, of, of living, but ultimately, this is temporary. I got, hopefully, 50 more years on this earth.
And I always got to remind myself, what am I going to do with the next 50 years? How am I going to impact the world? You know, I used to say, what is my significance? What, what is going to be my significance on this earth? But I found my significance because my significance is when God thought of me. I was already made significant. The day he thought of me, I've already made significant. I've been significant through his eyes. So I don't, I don't need to find significance anymore because I'm already significant. I just need to find purpose. And as you said, what's my purpose? And now I say, no longer say, what's my purpose? Because I looked in the Bible and my purpose was in there. So living the life of Jesus is easy. You know, it's just walking it out is the, is the hard part. And I feel like I just need to get it out. <laughs> oh, yeah. Come on, preacher. Uh, see, she said, you got to listen now. No, I'm just like, I feel the fire right now. So I just, like what, he, what my husband was saying about like, you know, um, like leaving a footprint, right? So I, I work with a PPT. And my PPT is my help in my classroom, and he's a believer too. But today we had just this conversation about heaven and about um, evangelizing and you know the generation all kinds of things and he goes and the world we're talking about the world how evil the world is and whatever he was talking to me about all these bad news and he goes I just can't wait to be raptured rapture this rapture that and I'm like it's not about going to heaven it's about bringing heaven down to earth you know and he was like, he was talking a lot about his family who's not saved and they do this and they do that kinds of stuff. And I said, look, well, what are you gonna do about it? You're a believer. They're an unbeliever, but you're a believer. What are you gonna do about it? You carry heaven wherever you go. So you have the authority to make a dent in an unbeliever's mind, you know? So what are you gonna do about it? right i said you're blessed to be alive right now because you're not done yet your job's not done yet don't worry about the rapture <laughs> you know what are you going to do about this now you know and he's just like yeah you're right you're right i'm like yeah lord touch him touch him you know but i mean that's that's i was feeling the fire I just wanted yeah, to add that no, that's good that. that's good see we're equally out because that's segueing into what I was going to talk about. So what's funny is, you can ask her, I used to always say that all the time before. Oh, Lord, rapture us already. Rapture us. You know, before I knew the love of God and before I stepped into my identity in this past year, is the only is a, since Jesus Conference in December is when I actually found my identity. I've been living as a Christian for, or well, a true Christian, I guess you'd say, for three and a half years. But it wasn't only till Jesus Conference when I found my identity and my purpose. And when I look in the mirror, I see Jesus. Before, I, when I looked in the mirror, I just saw Jason. But since Jesus Conference, I look in the mirror, I see Jesus. And when you come to a point where you can look in the mirror and see Jesus, see, the Bible says, love God with all your heart and soul. And it says, love your neighbor as you love yourself. So now that I see Jesus in the mirror, I love that person. Now I can go out and love my neighbor. So that's where, where I'm at now. I found my identity in Christ. So hearing that is like another thing, I, wisdom I came up with was I was driving and I, I downloaded this crazy thing where it says, it says, God didn't change me. He restored me. So I started looking into that. And there's a huge difference. Because I used to always say, God, thank you for changing me. Thank you for cha ch changing my life and transforming me. And, you know, that's awesome. But. When you look at the two words, it's truly different. You know, a restoration. If you think of like a car being restored, you know, after like a 1932 Ford, whatever it is, after all the years, they add paint on it, they put change the color, they they put new rims, and it's no longer the original. The value it devalues real quick. You know, if you sold that car like this, these auctions, it'll be a million dollar car. But since you added all that stuff on and it's not original, it's devalued. It's not until you sand off the original paint and find out what the real color was, what it original, you throw on all the original parts on it and you restore it to the value, that's when it's valuable. And that's what God does to us, is he restores us to our original value, it's the way he made us. Instead of 
changing us to someone new. It's kind of like telling God, he didn't make you good the first time. He has to change you to someone else. No, he, you were made good, so he's restoring you to your value. You're a million-dollar car, and you didn't even know it because you think you need to be changed. You just need to be restored. And there's a crazy meaning. So I, I looked up restoration. So the first meaning is restoring to the original. The second one is saying um, is uh, putting, restoring a monarchy onto the throne or bringing back to a regime. That's what restoration is. I thought I was like, oh, Lord, speaking to me, bringing us back to the throne that, that God put us on as kings and, and queens, you know. So with all this identity and stuff, this crazy wisdom, I think ever since, well, I know him especially, ever since Brazil, man, we've just been like sh shooting wisdom back and forth. And, you know, it's just amazing. You know, the wisdom that God gives you causes you to think and causes you to just dig deep into his heart that we can share with other people. And we were just sitting here. That's why we started a little late. We apologize. We were over here passing on wisdom. We were just enjoying just passing on, you know, the gospel, what the Bible tells us. And I, I kind of feel like I've, I was lied to for a few years, you know, <laughs> for a few years about my identity. I'm like, you know, it's, it, it's when I actually dug in there and searched for myself is when I found myself. You know, so, I mean, it's amazing, the wisdom. And, and like you said, it, it takes, I don't know if you said it or was it we're sitting down. Apart from Jesus, you can't read the Bible apart from Jesus. You know, Jesus has to be, you, be with you while you're reading the Bible because he's, he's the one who gives you the wisdom and interprets the Bible for you in the way that he wants you to understand it, you know. Thank you. That was amazing. You got to hang out with my daughter and teach her how to make videos and puppet shows. All right. Thank you. Oh, I'll do that one too. I found, I found another Genesis Cuts here. Let me know. But whoever was in second service that Sunday, I found my Abigail Grace optometrist. So it was actually not Abigail, but I'll take it. You know, we, we, Amelia was close. So, you know, I could have even said, oh, that's not you because you're missing one word. But, hey, sometimes you, you clo you're close, close enough, you know. So I found it, and just so happened she, need, she really needed prayer, just like the, the Jack Gunner, 1979. I forget the other word was. At the very moment, God will download these things. And it all came to me just being still and just listening to God. And so I want more. I feel like uh, Ron needs to say something. <laughs> you want to preach? You're going to do the Heidi Baker and preach from the ground. That's all it is right there. That's it right there. He's just saying, don't sell the blood of Christ short, right? He said the blood that is washing over each and every single one of us right now in this very moment, just by preaching the gospel, the blood is released. It goes into your mind. It goes and gives you a new mind. It says in 2 Peter 3, right? It says he did not come to just wash away dirt. The baptism is not a removal of dirt, but of a good conscience but to give you a good conscience. Whenever it says good in the Bible, that means God. It means you're giving you the mind of Christ, right? That is what it is. He's talking about Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and right now. It's just a matter of, it says, like how Makoa was saying, it says in Psalms 46, verse 10, cease your striving, and then what? And just know that I am God. And then I will do all of this. It says to know God, right? Eternal life in John, it says eternal life is to know God. To know in Hebrew is the word yada. The deepness of the word is yada means covenant. Covenant is family. He's just like, it's the same thing. It's the gospel, the restoration of the beginning of what it should be. We are bought back into his family. We are not born in sin, right? Check this out. We are born holy. To say that we are born into sin, that's folly. That's the Old Testament, right? Jesus Christ destroyed that. It says in Hebrews chapter 12, he came to destroy the devil. 
he came to destroy the devil, right? Don't give him any room. Don't give him any room. See, don't let, Todd White says, don't let sin on the outside become sin on the inside. Don't let the outside world and what is going on in the world be like, oh, but what about me? Bro, we dead already. It says once you see God, you died. But you're in Christ. You're in Christ. It says in Revelations, right? Live the victorious life. As Jesus Christ lived the victorious life. And you are found in Christ Jesus. What is the victorious life that Jesus Christ lived? It says he had victory and he never sinned, right? That is the victorious life he is calling us to live. Do not settle for less than what the blood is asking you to do and what it demands, right? He says in his word, there will come a time when there is a form of godliness, but it denies its power. Me and McCoy are just talking about this. The power that he's talking about isn't the power to heal. It's the power to walk out the life that it's saying, a form of godliness. You are called to be just like Jesus. Don't deny its power. The deepness of every single thing. It's ridiculous. <laughs> That's it, though. The ground is comfortable, though, just in case anybody's wondering. Hey, Kiki Kahu, where you at? Oh. You can preach on the ground, too. So Elijah um, had the chance to speak to every grade level so far this week as Kiki Kahu. Yeah. And it was amazing. You on video that? Hmm? You on video that? Or no? No, no, no more video, but. Okay, so, um, so I had the pleasure of being a part, or well, I have the pleasure of being a part of deputation team. A deputation team is basically a place where we gather up or invite people to come and just seek Christ more. But I joined deputation team last year, and I came with an expectation to seek more of God, but then it kind of died out to where we weren't really doing anything. And so... I did not want to be the Keiki Kahu at all. I didn't want to be it. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> and so, um, the <laughs> so Kahu, um, the Kahu, he's basically the pastor, and he's the one who's in charge of the deputation team, and he's the pastor of the school, and he oversees everything. And he told me on the very last retreat, like almost the very last day of school, this is before, like right before he's about to choose who's going to be Keiki Kahu. And he tells me, I want you to speak. Would you like to speak tonight in front of the deputation team? So I'm thinking like, no, I don't want to speak. <laughs> <laughs> and so we start worshiping, worshiping, worshiping. And that, I never worshiped like that before, like ever before, especially in front of my peers and everybody that I know. And when I start worshiping, God starts saying, I feel like you should go. Oh, I'm not feel. He knows I should go up and speak. So he's telling me, I go up and speak, go up and speak. And I feel it so heavy in my heart. And then Kahu looks at me. I just give him the thumbs up. That's it. And so, and so I go up there to speak. And it's not like I'm sp um, speaking on like, um, what's it called? On like, like this. I'm not speaking like this. We're in like a little circle. And so I'm just, I'm just like, in this place to where I don't know what I'm going to say. I'm in this place where I don't know what I'm going to say. But then I just come out just speaking, 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 speaking. And I don't know where I get this from. It just comes out of nowhere. Uh, well, it comes from Jesus. God, him. <laughs> and so it's just flowing and flowing and flowing. And I'm seeing all these people. And they're just so like, what is happening? And they're looking at me like, what in the world? And so they come up, there's people coming up to me after. It's like, I was so touched by your message. It's so amazing. I never heard like this before, and I never heard God speak like this before. And what can happen, what can happen, all this. And this is before the Brazil trip. This is before the Brazil trip. And so the Kahu comes up to me um, the next day, and he says, I want to speak to you alone. So everybody's around. He said, everybody clear the room. I want to speak to Elijah alone. And he brings me up. And he says, I would like you to be the next year's Keiki Kao. So right there and there, I'm like, yes. <laughs> Before I said no, I was like completely, I'm not doing it. I don't want to be doing this. I don't want to be taking on extra work with my schoolwork. And so I take this on. 
coming this year. So throughout the summer, when I went to Brazil, I came back, and I've been having meetings with the Kahu, and I've been having meetings with the, there's other, and there's another Keiki Kahu, her name is Jessie, and there's a Keiki Hope, which is Mina. They're both amazing, awesome people. And so we all have this role, and I never took something so seriously in my life than this thing alone. Like, I never put so much time and dedication to something than this alone. Because I feel like God really wanted, wants to move Kamehameha schools, and it already begun. Right, be, right on the first day of school, he, tell, he tells me, your mission has begun. It's already began. My mission has began a long time ago, but a new, another mission. You mean, it goes deeper. It goes deeper and deeper and deeper. And so he's telling me, he's telling me all these things, and I'm getting all this revelation from his school. And so um, we have our first retreat. Our first retreat where our deputation team comes together. They're talking, da 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 um, just Last year, they had, um, so every single year it's like this. We, we have worship at night, and then everybody comes together and starts crying. And so, oh, I had this and that, and this is wrong with, with my life. But nothing is being put back. They release that thing, but that's it. It comes to end. They release it. Oh, my family's having this problem. That's it. They walk, they go throughout their life. But that's not what it is. Something has to replace that spot. When that thing is released, something has to replace the spot. What is that? That is God. God comes into that spot. He comes into that void. See, nothing else can fill that void but God. Um, so in the retreat, this year's retreat, um, we planned an intercession for that night. We wanted to do intercession. And I believe God was really going to move on that night. I was like, so fixated. I was like, oh, I can't wait to intercession. I can't wait to intercession. That's all I'm focused on. But, <laughs> but, then, but then I'm so focused on a certain part of my retreat for God to show up. When I should be focusing on the whole entire retreat alone, God showing up. I should want God to just wreck us all right when we walk on campus. What is this? What is this? And I want them. I just, but... Right, starting with the prayer walk. Just starting with the prayer walk. I'm praying for this lady. And she's like, you know, my daughter knows you. I was like, okay. <laughs> and she's like, yeah, she knows you from somewhere. I was like, where's that place? Oh, um, I don't know. Uh, so <laughs> and so just from that, I, I'm getting to know more people, getting to know more people. And I pray with her. I pray, for, pray with her for my school. And we're do, going throughout this prayer walk um, to pray over our school. That's what it's for, prayer walk. Um, and we get down to our gym. And from our gym, so there's the gym. And then there's this long flight of stairs to the middle school. And so I'm at the top of this gym. We're all at the top of this gym. And there's this lady with a cane. She's just sitting there. She has tubes all stuff for her nose. She has like a um, tank right there. And then the kahu says, and he never does this. He says, I want you guys to break up into pairs and just pray for one person over here. Right then and there, I stare right to the lady with the tubes. I'm like, here I go, I'm going. <laughs> and so I say, auntie, can I pray for you? And she was like, she was like, kind of like, no, not really. But I was like, I'll take that as a yes anyways. <laughs> and so I start praying for her and she's just like, so you know how when you pray, like people keep and close their eyes, well, this lady is staring me right in the eyes while I'm praying for her. So I'm like, and then her husband's next to her and staring me right in the eyes. So I'm like kind of nervous and like, <sighs> and so I'm praying for her, praying for her. I'm thinking it's like, okay, that's all I need. That's, I don't need to, I'm not going to ask her to check it. Because no matter what, I know that the seed was sown into her no matter what. And so I walk away. I walk down the huge flight of stairs because Kamehameha School is basically made out of stairs. And so <laughs> I get to the bottom of the stairs, and Auntie Carlene and then Auntie Gail from um, Whitmore, Calvary, no, not Calvary, Praise Chapel. So, yeah, Praise Chapel. They come running down the stairs, running down the stairs. Elijah, Elijah, you don't know what just happened. You don't know what just happened. I'm like, I don't know what just happened. <laughs> <laughs> and they're telling me, this lady that was up there, she said she was looking for you, looking for you, because she wants to take a picture of you. So she, so she could show me to her daughter. So I'm thinking like, okay. <laughs> and so 
um, they're saying, oh, she feels so much more better. She's been feeling, uh, she's feeling God, the presence of God, and she feels like she's being healed. And I was like, right then and there, I was like, oh, thank you, God. That is so amazing. <laughs> and so right then and there, God is like just, just showing people already in my deputation team because I was expecting it to happen in intercession and all that kind of stuff. But it's happening already. It should be happening every single second of my life. That's what, that's what I wanted to do. All this stuff to be happening constantly, constantly. And so I'm going throughout this retreat, and I'm seeing God move in so many ways. And it comes to this place to where I have to talk about the theme of the school year. And it's being fruitful in and out of season, in all seasons. And so I told people, everybody to break into four groups, because there's about, um, uh, let's say, 40 of us showed up to this retreat. In all, there's about 60 people on our deputation team. And so I tell everybody to break up into four groups. And we're talking, we're talking. And then Ail calls me over. He's like, he's like, what, oh, what is struggle? Where does struggle come from? Because he's talking to everybody in his group. And I just finished talking with everybody in my group. And then he says, where does struggle come from? I was like, here. And then I start explaining and explaining and explaining. And then he's like, and then the other people on the group, on the other groups are like, oh, what is he talking about? And so we break up. He takes like half of everybody. I take the other half. The kahu is nowhere to be found. <laughs> <laughs> he he kind of went to another um, another place. And then so we're speaking life, speaking life, speaking life. And then the kahu comes in and he's listening to us, listening to us, listening to us. And he's, he's such an awesome guy. Kahu Cordell Kiko, he's so awesome. And so we're speaking life, speaking life, speaking life, having God speak through us. And they're just getting wrecked. They're getting wrecked, absolutely wrecked. And then we start talking about prophecy. We start talking about healing. We start sharing testimonies. And they're just like in awe because they're hungry. You know what I mean? They are hungry for more and more. They might not know it, but they are. They are hungry. <laughs> and so it comes to um, worship. And worship starts to happen. And like normal, people are sharing and this and that. We actually had a worship band that was supposed to come, but they didn't show up. And so I started playing my my Bluetooth speaker. I played one song, and then I saw um, a boy in the corner. He had a guitar. I was like, perfect. Let's do live worship. I'm turning this thing off. Let's do live worship right now. And so I tell two, uh, I asked if two, two people could go up and um, sing, and it was that simple. You actually don't even need to have music to feel God's presence. So you don't have to get into this place and say, okay, wait, I have to spend five minutes praying, and I have to spend five minutes doing this. No, just in your car, just ask God, come into me right now. You feel him right there. <laughs> and so worship comes, and, and everybody's doing that, and then we come to intercession. Anybody who wants to come, so this is optional. Hope, come to intercession, seek God more. And people come and come, and basically everybody comes wanting more because they heard testimonies. And you know what? I said, well, we said that um, you can do the same exact things. See, everybody was given the gift of prophecy, the gift of all these kind of things. When the Holy Spirit came into us, we received all of that. And so what made me, like, I wanted to cry that night so badly because I saw, I saw people just like, just so on fire for God and igniting. Um, and they started speaking and speaking and speaking to other people. And they're like, oh, wait, can I prophesy over you? Oh, wait, can I prophesy over you? And they're prophesying over objects and they run outside. There's this kid named Zach. He runs outside. He's like, I prophesy over those five palm trees right there. And he starts prophesying and prophesying. I'm like, oh, this guy's crazy. <laughs> and so these, these, these kids are going off. And then um, just to end the night for that, we went to... Um, we played hide and seek. Wasn't supposed to be up at that night. We were supposed to be in bed by 11 o'clock. It was 3 o'clock a.m. <laughs> and so I just want to share that because my heart is just so, like, touched to see everybody in my school also being touched and on fire for God even more. And so time for the part for this week um, when, I was, when I had to share in front of... Um, 
all grade levels for high school. Um, the call who told me about like four days before, I want you to share for, oh no, he told me I want, he wanted me to share for the first chapel, but I didn't know how long I had, I had or stuff like that. So he told me how long I had. I wrote a quick, just, I say I took like 20 minutes just writing, 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 writing. I don't spend any more than that because I want the Holy Spirit to come. I want the Holy Spirit to speak. I don't want to be speaking from my head knowledge or any of that. I want the Holy Spirit to speak through me. And so uh, I come, so the first, first class is the sophomores. I start to speak and speak and speak. And I say whatever I have to say. I do go somewhat off my phone because I wrote onto my phone. I do go somewhat off my phone. But it's mostly off script. Then I come to the freshman, I speak. And so I'm speaking about, um, so I come off pretty, pretty. I'm not going to lie, pretty bad. Uh, it sounds bad anyways to them. <laughs> I, say, I say, today I want to speak about something as I heard of before which is sin. I start speaking, I, I say sin, and there's everybody's like, oh, sin, uh-oh. <laughs> I don't want to hear that. <laughs> and so, huh? Oh. <laughs> and so I go from sin to talking about glory. I go from sin to talking about, um, I bring up the verse, oh, we have all fallen short of the glory of God, and we haven't. I tell them we have in the past, we, at once in the past, but we no longer. See? God came to show our worth. He came to reveal our worth through the cross. He died on the cross for us so he can reveal our worth. As if Adam, so he restores us to our former glory as if Adam never ate the apple. So I go on and on and on. And I asked them to pray for each other and I explained the importance of prayer. But what was awesome too is that the freshmen, they were receiving Bibles that day. All the freshmen were receiving Bibles. So I explained the importance of Bibles. I'm reading your Bible, even if it's just one verse, one small little verse every single day. God sees your heart. God sees what you're doing. Just one small verse. Daily bread. It's daily bread for a reason. It's not cake for special occasions. <laughs> and so, <laughs> um, so I started explaining. But then when it came to today, God said, I want, to sh I want you to share and something else and do something different from yesterday. And so today was the juniors and seniors. Seniors is my, you know, my class. Those are the people I know. And so I was kind of scared, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I was kind of scared. And so I start sharing like what I usually share. I added on uh, about two more paragraphs and then I kind of went off of that, but totally off of what I wrote. And I start sharing and start sharing. And then I asked the seniors, seniors were first. I was like, what more will the Father give to those who ask? What more will the Father give to those who ask? So right now I ask you, um, do you guys want Jesus? Do you guys want to accept Jesus into your heart? And so I start saying these things, saying these things. And I'm telling them to give up, give up your life because it wasn't yours in the first place. See, your life is not yours. Just, you're just giving up to him. And so... Um, so I run them through the prayer of salvation, and I just see hands raise up. I say, raise your hand. So I, I tell them to bow their heads first and close their eyes. And I see hands raised, hands raised, hand ra hands raised. And I start crying, like, not crying, crying, but I started, like, just, like, just so wowed by how amazing God is and how he's working through my school already. And it's only been a week and a half. And... And already I'm seeing lives being saved by Jesus. And then so I come to the junior class and I share, 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 share. And every single class I'm sharing, like, it's kind of the same, but it's different. It's different. Holy Spirit's speaking in different ways. And so I bring it to the junior class, even more people. I'd say in all, um, couldn't really count, but 33 in all through, um, juniors and seniors were saved today. <laughs> Let's, let's thank the YPI team, absolutely, absolutely. So I, um, this morning I was texting Pastor Mike and uh, some of the other pastors to tell, okay, so Ka'eo, or who? Ka'eo sent me 
um, the video, video clips of you speaking yesterday. So then I thought, wow, this is amazing. So I'm going to send it to the pastors. So then I forward the text to Pastor Mike. And then I thought, I'll just add up all the other pastors too. So I added up all the pastors. And I said, look at this. And it had K um, Keiki Kahu Elijah speaking to the um, freshmen and sophomores. And then I added a few words. And then um, Pastor Mark says, wow, he's anointed to preach. That's what Pastor Mark said. And Pastor Mike said, wow, revival has already started at Kamehameha. So praise God. Praise God. And then I added, <laughs> I added, I said, see, this is the investment we made in the next generation. This is the next generation who are just loving God and will pursue God, and there's no stopping them. There is no stopping this generation for God. So praise God for all of you guys, for all of you guys. There's, there's nothing's going to stop the fire. Nothing's going to stop the fire. So praise God. <laughs> Nothing, nothing is going to stop this fire. This is the next generation. And this is where, this is where the older generation needs to learn from the younger generation. And the older generation has to lay aside pride and receive from the younger generation. I, you know, I mean, I think that's basically what, uh, what we all need to know. And so then I said, um, so then I asked this question, um, and the question is, um, how do we make room for this NG? How do we make room for this next generation? In other words, um, as, as, as the leadership, how do we make room for the next generation, the NG? And um, one of the answers that came back is they have the whole world for their playground. So the whole world is a playground, so ha there's unlimited room. So wherever God sends you, wherever God sends you, wherever God places you, that is where he wants you to be, and that is where you're going to be fruitful. That is where you're going to be fruitful. Wait, who said fruitful? <laughs> oh, but was that, the, that, that was your theme verse, so the theme verse about being fruitful. The theme verse about being fruitful, absolutely. That, so wherever, wherever God has planted you, that is where you become fruitful if you're faithful and obedient. If you're faithful and obedient, that's where he will make you fruitful. And that's what he wants from all of us, to be fruit-bearing Christians, yeah? To be fruit-bearing Christians. So I'm sorry. I, I think we're running over time. So thank you. Thank you all for being here. Thank you. Thank you all for the YPI. I'm sorry I was um, in another place earlier tonight. But thank you for taking over. And um, everybody, just give them a hand. We want this next generation to know that they are highly valued. They are highly valued in God, and they are highly favored of God. So you're highly favored of God, and you are highly valued in God, and you are highly valued in my heart and in the hearts of all these people that are here. So we're going to close in prayer. So why don't we all stand up? Absolutely. And thank you to our faithful sound and um, media team. Thank you, Mr. Ken. Thank you, Cynthia. Thank you. Thank you. And for all of you just for being here. Thank you. So let's bow our heads and let's pray. So, Father, we give you worship, praise, honor, and glory. And we say, Lord, we want more of you, more of you. And, God, that we would chase after you, that we would pursue you because you want to pursue us. And so, Father, we declare that there will be fruitfulness in every one of our lives, that wherever we go, whatever we do, whoever we speak to, Lord, that you will open up that door, that conversation, and we can speak life into that person. We can speak life into that situation. We can speak the power and the anointing of your Holy Spirit into that situation, into that life. And so we declare that even now, Lord, for each person in this room, each person who has come out tonight, Lord, we speak life and life more abundantly. Lord, we speak and we declare the power of the resurrected Savior. 
the mighty power of the Holy Spirit that brought Christ back from the dead, we speak that mighty power to be at work in and through each one in this room tonight. And we declare it so because it is your divine purpose, because it is your divine will. And we say, Amen. So be it. Thank you, Lord. Amen.